Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's continue on on the 200T um, build series we're doing. This is a saw I built years ago. It doesn't have good compression, friends. I'm not sure why. Maybe the piston got injured along the way. Who knows? Maybe there's something wrong with the cylinder. This saw is all OEM except for the piston. So who knows if we got a bad piston or something like that. I built this saw three years ago. We're going to take it apart today. Let's critique my work and I'll tell you what maybe I did wrong or maybe what I see. Um, this saw just doesn't thump and it should thump for a saw that... I think this saw has, I'm going to guesstimate, 8 to 10 tanks on it. Um, it doesn't have good compression, and it doesn't even feel like it ever broke in. So, who knows why. And again, everybody, thanks for hanging out here. I enjoy sharing what I do with you. And again, stay tuned till the end of the video, because I'm going to do another question of the day. Let's get going on this. I got it set up on the vise, and uh, I'm not using the piston that's in it. I'm going to put a pop-up piston from highway that I got from Wolf Creek. I'm going to put that in this saw and uh, just do a little bit of a hot rod build, but not anything crazy. So let's pull the top end off on this and really see what's going on. Cause like I said, compression this saw don't feel good. I, I don't know why, um, but we're going to find out. So I'll set you guys up at the bench here and let's get this thing torn down. Okay. Here's our 200 T. I think I'm going to take my jacket off. It's getting warm in here. This shop's funny. So friends, what I do is I wake up at like six, maybe five. I'll come out here as early as I can and I make a roaring fire. And then I, uh, I'll let it heat up for an hour, say, and then I come out here. It's still a little cold in the shop when I get out here, but, uh, that's what I do. That's kind of my morning routine when I'm, uh, in the shop working on saws. Summer's nice. I can... Summer is so easy for me to film because I just come out here whenever I want. This saw, this shop's really well insulated, but, uh, it's really well insulated, but it's quite windy here in the winter. So you get some drafts and that makes, it can make it really hard to warm up the shop. Okay. Four bolts, just like any other saw. I have this thing mounted in a vise, um, just an old vise I have under the shelf under the bench. I can't even remember what I did to this saw. I'm thinking it doesn't have a base gasket. Yeah, like I wonder, did I put a base gasket in this thing? Nope, I did not. Interesting. It almost feels like that moto seal wasn't very stuck. So maybe this saw had a little air leak in it. Could be, could be that would be the first time I've ever had moto seal not stick. Yeah. Oh, right there, friends. So, yeah, there we go. This is the first time for me. Um, it looks like my moto seal didn't stick in this saw. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, that'll do it, friends. That will do it. Here's the cylinder. It's got a little bit of scoring in it on the intake side, pretty common. Oh, look at that. Oh, friends, look at this piston. So, I'm going to say right now, I think this thing actually had an air leak. Funny story. It, uh, that moto seal was not sealed on this thing. Bring you guys right in here. The moto seal wasn't sealed on this thing. I just pulled that cylinder right off. It didn't feel like it was glued down at all. And uh, interesting. That's the first time I've ever had a base gasket delete that appears to have not sealed. So um, I know it's happened to other people and I, I've heard about it. Interesting. So there we go. I'm going to have to wash this out real good rod looks minty minty it's pretty pretty dark at the top it has gotten hot Let's see is there any play let's zoom you guys back out here is there any play in the rod nope wrist pin bearing little side to side's fine no up and down again no up and down they will the rod will go side to side low now these have roller bearings in them look see how it's moving 
Don't be afraid if your 200T does that or your McCullough. Some of the McCulloughs are like that. Um, if you see a roller bearing in there, that's your issue. Yeah, so 100% friends, this thing had an air leak. I'm pretty sure of it. And you guys can see that's why it didn't have compression. This piston is really scored up now. Who knows when it happened. I may have even done it the last time I cut with this thing. I have a feeling that this thing had a bad carb on it and then developed an air leak. And uh, once I fixed the carb, I was running it last week. And it seemed to run okay. It tuned nice, but maybe it went a little lean there. Not the worst scoring, but you guys can see it. Kind of ugly. I'm hoping I can save the cylinder. I should be able to. I don't really feel there's a little bit of transfer on it. But not a ton. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I almost want to set this thing back up with the new piston and retime it and see what we have. Are you guys interested in that? Because I have the timing with this. Now, if I'm if I remember correctly, this is a farmer tech piston. And uh this is before I used to I used to just throw pistons in. This is before I smoothed and chamfered all the edges. And uh well there you go. There's the results. Again, friends, these have double transfers. I'm kind of inclined to cut the center out. I may not do that though, but we'll see. Again, huge blowdown. You guys can see the top of the exhaust port is right here on the top of the transfers. You know, friends, I'm going to throw that new piston in. Let's just time this thing with the new piston because I might not like the timing on the new piston and may want to try a different piston. Who knows? Give me a second here. I'll set it all back up. Okay, friends, here's that cool little highway piston. I cleaned up a little bit of transfer in the cylinder. Okay, we'll put that on there like this. I'm actually kind of shocked how scored up this thing is, but eh, whatever, that's power saw. Sometimes they do some... And again, this is 100% a junk saw when I built it. I built many, many saws from nothing more than a bin full of parts and carcasses, so... It is what it is. Sometimes when you make something from nothing, um, you end up with issues. Okay, I'll put the timing wheel on this thing. And let's retime it with the highway cylinder. I'll turn it sideways. And again, for those of you that are new here, drill chuck. Put it on the end of the crankshaft. Pushing it right to the shoulder. I'm going to put this at 71 with the timing mark. Because the last piston was 71. That should get us close. There we go. Okay, so again, I'll turn it to the timing stop. And I'll put it right around 71. I like to leave the clutch on because it gives me something to hold on to. Okay, where are we at? We're at 74 and 71. So I need to move this over to about 72 and a half, which I'll do. Okay. And we're at 72, 73 and a half. I'm going to cinch it down a little more because it's a little too loose. Again, when you first start doing this, it might take you a while to zero everything. Just looking for the right. Is that a 13 or a 14? It might take you a while to zero things, but that's okay. Just make sure it's right, because if it's not right, there we go, make it tight. 72 and 73, so I'm going to go 72 and a half on this side, and 72 and a half on this side, and that should get me right where I want to be. And if you guys 
I get asked, what do I use as my pointer? Welding rod. 72 and a half. 72 and a half. Okay, we're good to go. I'll aim you guys at the timing wheel again. And let's time this new pistons. And then we can talk about, based on what the piston's doing, what I'm going to do to this saw. And again, just to show you your stop, 72 and a half. 72 and a half. There is a perspective difference. I'll try and lower you guys down here. That should do it. Uh, a little bit higher. Now, if you guys are making videos, you'll fumble with this. It is really hard to get the camera to see what you're seeing on the wheel. Okay, 72 and a half. 72 and a half. So we know there's a difference in the crown. There's one and a half degrees of difference in the height of the crown, if that makes sense. Which tells me this piston crown is higher by one and a half degrees. Well, it should be, it has a pop-up, right? So that pop-up, that pop-up is like probably three degrees of timing and height. Okay, I'm gonna put my scope back in here and get a quick timing measurement on this. Piston's going up, right there. Well, where are we at? Make sure I get a good. So we're at 98, friends. So that tells me that the, the pop-up is higher on this, but not the crown. Okay, so we're still at 98. I'm going to do it again. And we're at 98. Okay, so that should be the same. I'll check the transfers again, just for fun. Right there, transfers. This one doesn't have any carbon on it, so I might get a different reading. Right about there. I can only check one side of the transfers on this saw. Oh, so this thing has even more blowdown now. It looks like 33 degrees. So 98, 133. And what's our intake doing? The intake might be a lot different. The skirt might be longer or shorter. If it's longer, if the skirt's longer, it will open later. If the skirt's shorter, it'll open sooner. Sooner means we'll have longer intake timing. Shorter means we'll have shorter intake timing. That's easy to fix. Okay, it opens right about there. What do we got? 75, so this intake skirt is a little bit longer. So we have 98, 133, which is kind of strange, but again, there's a lot of carbon on the sides of that other piston. 98, 133, and 75 are our timing numbers. Okay, highway, pop up. Pop up. Exhaust is... 98 degrees after top dead center. Again, spicy. Transfers. And I will check these with a ring. That is long blowdown. Transfers 133 after top dead center. That's 35 degrees of transfer blowdown. That's 10 degrees more than I would even attempt to do on a saw like this. But again, friends, you have to work with what the saw provides you. I don't want to grind those up 10 degrees. That's ridiculous. I will if I have to, but remember friends, work within, you have to think about what the factory was trying to do and what the timing numbers do to how the saw runs. This saw, high RPM, it's got a lot of torque for a 35cc saw. Um, it idles nicely. So intake, Intake is at 75 or 150. So I can add four degrees of intake timing is probably what I'll do. I might add a little bit more. I would like to drop this exhaust two degrees, which again will bring me down to 100. But if I drop the cylinder two degrees, guess what? I'm going to have to change my transfer timing because I will then have 37 degrees of timing. Um... We can work on that. I can actually wrap the sides of the piston on this thing and uh, 
open the transfer sooner with the sides of the piston if I don't want to grind it up 10. Maybe I grind them up five or three or four and then add two or three degrees of transfer timing by literally taking my grinder and dishing the sides of the piston. I might do that anyways, friends, because this has a pop-up in it. I might flow the transfers to actually flow a little bit higher to go over that, that dome, that pop-up, and then I can also flow the sides of the piston and angle them with a straight edge, kind of use my straight edge so that they're angled to go up and over the pop-up. Um, pop-ups can be a good thing, but they can actually be a bad thing. Yes, you add compression with a pop-up, but you can actually create turbulence in that transfer flow. And what you can end up with is actually a lackluster saw that will have lots of compression, but you can't figure out why it's just not a performer. Well, it could be because your pop-up's too high or, or the transfers are opening and it's hitting the sides of the pop-up and causing a swirl. You want to force that air up over top of the intake and up and over the piston so that when the piston comes up it pushes that air uh, into the combustion chamber that's why generally you don't want a flat squish band you want your squish band a little bit like this and I know guys argue about this but you want that squish band to be cut on a slight angle so that that air has an easy passage to get into the combustion chamber less air in the combustion chamber means less fuel Less fuel and air means less power. What you're doing when you pour a saw is you're trying to increase the volumetric efficiency. When you get it right, you will have an animal. Sometimes, friends, you build a saw that's an absolute monster and the timing numbers and the porting isn't anything spectacular. It's because you got the volumetric efficiency right and the saw is just running optimal. When you get that, you'll just have an awesome saw. The, the beauty is when you keep notes, I take a lot of pictures of work I've done. When you take notes and pictures, you can actually recreate it later on. The more notes you take, the better, because maybe you do another one five years down the line and you can't remember what you did to the last one. Well, you get it, you go into your notebook and start combing through. I also keep files in my phone and pictures of my work. Anyhow, friends, so, I'm going to have to check the squish on this, and I guess I can do that on video. I'll check the squish, and then I'll tell you guys what I want to do with this saw. Again, I, I'm aiming for a 100 exhaust roof on this. I want the exhaust roof to be lower. I'm probably going to slightly trim the bottoms of that divider for the transfers. Now, before you guys get worried about the ring hitting it, I can see where the ring is touched in the saw because it's shiny. Okay, There's about this much underneath the ring. Um, where the saw or where the ring has never made contact with the transfer. You don't want to cut any higher than that because what can happen, because your transfers are so wide, you can end up with the ring going into the transfer and it'll get hang, hung up and you'll break the top of the transfer off, the lower transfer that is. So this has no upper and lower transfers. It's open port. Again, an open port saw that runs good. Open port or cold port, don't bother me. Friends, all those home lights I've ported are all open port and they all absolutely uh, cut with anything. Uh, they're strong. Uh, McCullough's, if you do a McCullough right, um, there's some moves I've learned on transfers in McCullough's. If you do it right, they absolutely flow and they cut really well. So anyhow, friends, I'll get the squish measurement uh, off video. But basically what I'm probably going to do this is drop the cylinder you know, a couple thou, however much I need. I'll have to figure out what my stroke is and how many thousands per degree I have. And then that's how I decide how much I want to cut off. Say on, on a random number, one degree is five thousands in this saw or ten thousands. Okay, we'll leave it a round number. If one degree is ten thousands and I need to drop my exhaust two degrees, I will cut twenty thousands off the base. It's just that simple. So... Now I'm in deep thought. This is what I do, friends. I take the saw apart, look at the design, run the saw if possible, and then decide what moves I want to make. I want a little more compression to this, but not so much that the saw is going to run hot. Remember, uh, these things can get real hot. They are a hot rod, and uh, you, you don't want them to be hotter. 
It's good that they run at such high RPM because the flywheel spins at 14,000 RPM. You're blowing a lot of air off that flywheel. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to spend some time and clean up the cylinder. I already did. Most of the transfer that was on there came off. So um, I see no trouble there. Anyhow, friends, hope you guys are enjoying a still on the bench. Friends, I would work on more stills. There just aren't any to work on here. Um, stills are gold, and nobody really sells bigger stills here. You rarely see them for sale. I used to buy them, but they're just not around. I would work on more stills if I could find more stills, but uh, they're just not around here. So it is what it is. It's time for question of the day. Once again, this one comes from a guy with a wicked name, Audi Malarkey. I love it. That's a good handle. Audi Malarkey is asking, um, he has a XL130 home light. You guys know I put my name on the map, I guess, by porting home lights. What a silly idea. Nobody was porting them then, and I had a bunch in the shop, and I thought, I wonder what would happen. Well, we all know they actually go pretty good. Audi was wondering, A, do I have a spare cylinder for 130? Audi, I don't actually sell parts, buddy. I'm just here to share what I'm doing in the shop and to share info. He was looking for one. Now, I know that there are aftermarket cylinders of all, uh, uh, around. I don't know the quality of them. I've never used one. You could try looking for an aftermarket cylinder. What I typically do, friends, a lot of these vintage saws you guys see me building on the channel, I will actually, uh, I'll buy three, four, five good saws and run through them and pick parts off the worst one. That's kind of the game when you're building vintage power saws. Um, it, a lot of these saws, you can't get parts, coils, even pistons and rings. A lot of times I'll take three saws and build one out of them. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Uh, XL130 and XL76 have the same top end, more or less. There's slight differences, but nothing that would make it so you can't mount it up to your saw. So... Audi, thanks for sending your question, and I hope that helped you out. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.